I am out here fishing Dangerfield State Park drove out this morning from Grapevine got here about 1230 chasing chain pickerel this fish I've read come up shallow to spawn this time of year it's the only pike species we have here in Texas or one of the only I think there's maybe a log perch that counts I have been here no more 15 minutes perhaps and I had one chase my fly and I've got a jerk bait tied on and caught one on my jerk bait as well so I've got a bait caster and a fly rod caught a little one on my jerk bait had another one chase my fly on the surface it was pretty cool fishing with 20 pound fluorocarbon I'd read another gentleman talk about doing that with their teeth water's kind of turbid it's that East Texas tea so you don't have to worry about them seeing your line as much I don't think but the one that was chasing it was kind of chasing it after I dropped it off the lily pad so I'm trying to just kind of drag these across the top of these pads and see if that didn't entice a strike but it's a beautiful place I'd read before that they're in these lily pads this time of year and so that's where I'm fishing right now I've got on some sort of a red and orange min imitation I don't remember where I where I got this or what it's called hopefully I can catch some of these things and show you guys my first ever pick roll right here on a jerk bait ran a fly through there earlier no luck but looky here first ever pickerel awesome 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 Cool is that? Does he have any teeth yet? Oh yeah, he's got teeth. Look at those chompers. Awesome. So this is the fly I was using. Just a little bronze colored minute pattern. I switched to this because the hook was smaller on it. Let me get this turned the right way. The hook was smaller on it. Uh, the other fly I was using was uh, catching on the lily pads. So this is a little bit smaller, smaller hook. Rides higher in the water, didn't seem to mind. Most of my strikes have happened moving the fly or lure quickly and close to the surface. Jerk bait, right here. <laughs> they seem to like this jerk bait. I'll probably get to where I fish that where I can. Oh, he might spit the hook. He's barely hooked. But the benefit of three treble hooks is that he was barely hooked at one point and then rehooked himself twice. such cool looking fish got another fish on here I think I've got a pattern figured out they seem to like it really aggressively stripped it's tangled up in a weed seems to my advantage right now oh he's loose another nice little pickerel man this is what pickerel number four already I hear some fighters too man not brown. Fortunately, you can't lip them. You gotta try and get them in the body. There we go. Boy, I got some chompers too. Another cool little pickerel. I'm just gonna hold him by. Man, they are slimy. Boy, he is slimy. Okay, so I worked the cove behind me for a little bit. I don't know how long, maybe 30 minutes or so. 
So I'm going to come out here to this lily pad edge. Get my jerk bait. Just a gold Impala jerk bait. Let's see if I can't find anything. There's one right there. I mean, right on cue. Big fish of the day, too, I think. No, he's just hooked to the side. Yeah, big fish of the day, actually. Right on cue, man. That is so fun. Okay. Well, I actually use the grippers on him. Treble hooks in you. I don't want to get any treble hooks in me. I go a little bit too far here. There you go. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Boy, he is chewed up. His big brother got after him, I guess. Look at that first cast weed edge, though, with this jerk bait. What I'm doing with this jerk bait is trying to cast right up to the edge of the lily pads because this thing with all these treble hooks will get hung real bad if it actually goes in the lily pads so you just get right up to the edge I'm actually reeling down on it a little bit not popping it straight from the surface just because it throws up a lot of water when you do that I don't want to spook the fish Oh, there's one following it right there. I don't know if you can see him. There's one behind it, though. Smaller than the one I just caught. With a fish trailing nonetheless. Lake isn't very big, and so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go around, and when I see a big pocket of, of lily pads like that back behind me, I'll break out the fly rod. But I think the best way to cover ground on this is just to kind of run around the lake and um, fish the edge of these lily pads with this jerk bait. I can cover water more quickly. It's a lot easier to get uh, squared away. And um, just fish the bigger sections with the fly rod as well. And I tell you, if I come along something, it's just kind of as you can see, there's I mean, there's lily pads all along the edge here. If I come along a section of lily pads, it's thin like this, but I see a hole in the middle, uh, like an opening where there aren't any pads. I'll fish that with the fly rod as well. I found that um, back when I was fishing this pocket behind me, that's where I ended up hooking up with a bunch of these pickerel. 
There's another one right there. Man, they are loving this jerk bait. Look at that. I mean, folks, no matter which way you cut this, this is a great day of fishing. I've caught fish on my fly rod. I've caught fish on my bait caster. Let's see if I can't get this guy to open his mouth. I think I'm just going to have to use my hands on this one, which is fine. Just trying to avoid all the slime, man. These things are slimy. And they got teeth on top of teeth. I mentioned earlier these fish have uh, teeth. So something to keep in mind is uh, if you catch them, you want to retie if your line is neck. Now on the fly rod, every time I caught one, I retied because um, they're engulfing that. I have a smaller jerk bait than this. It's a two hook jerk bait. It's maybe, uh, I don't know how big this is, three inches. The other one's maybe two inches. Um, but I'm leaving this one on because this one, they don't get it all the way in their mouth. My fear with them getting it all the way in their mouth is that it'll nick the line. I'll have to retie a lot. And this is only 12 pound monofilament. On my fly rod, I was using, or am using, 20 pound fluorocarbon. And so using a, a longer wooden bait like this, like this uh, Rapala, allows you not have to retie all the time. So just something to keep in mind. But if you are fishing with your fly rod or a smaller lure that they can fit all the way in their mouth, you will want to retie frequently. Okay, coming back over here, just caught this fish. I just caught that fish, y'all saw. In this area, once again, just going to cast up to the edge. The only problem with fishing bait casters is your hands get so cold you can't feel the line. Can't feel my thumbs on the spool, off the spool, what it's doing. Definitely a cold weather sport here. There's a fish right there, right where he's supposed to be. Right where he is supposed to be. Oh, he come off. That's okay. I was trying to back up here. There's another section of weeds that I want to flow into. The I decided to come out here today because the temperature when I woke up and the temperature at sunset and the temperature at noon. Oh, I missed, missed another fish. We're all within five degrees of each other. So I woke up, it was 43. I think the high for the day was like 46 or something. And then tonight, when it gets dark, it's going to be like 41. Kind of a weird between fronts deal here or something. And um, the wind is supposed to top out at like seven miles an hour. Just missing another fish, John. Right. And so um, I didn't have to wake up at 6 a.m. to get out here before it warmed up or before it got. Oh, and it was overcast all day, so I didn't have to wake up before it was, you know, before it got um, too bright, you know, and drove the fish deep. I had to get out here and try and beat the wind. Initially, I thought I was going to go out and try and fish fish Texoma this morning, maybe duck hunt, but the wind was supposed to kick up mid morning about. 10 15 miles an hour 10 to 12 miles an hour excuse me which in this kayak um 
on a big lake is more than I really want to fool with. It gets kind of hairy. You spend more time fighting the wind than you do fishing. And so I thought, well, maybe I can go find me a smaller lake to fish. And I got to thinking, well, what about pickerel? I know danger feels pretty small. Check the weather out here. And the winds are only supposed to top out like seven miles an hour out here, which is fantastic. And um, that's probably what I would guess it is right now. I'm in a protected cove. You can't really see. But uh, you'll see later on, when I go to a different section of the lake, I'll be much more exposed to the wind. It's going to be a fish. I have a feeling. Hmm. Feelings are wrong. But the, the conditions for today were just pretty perfect. And so I didn't have to wake up real early to come out here. I just kind of got up at, uh, I don't think I woke up till 8 o'clock this morning. Slept in, left the house at 10 o'clock, maybe got here about 12.30. About a two and a half hour drive from Grapevine over here. And um, easy drive, you just run straight over 30. 30 to Mount Pleasant. Take 49 down to the city of Dangerfield, known for the Lone Star Steel Plant, as well as the late 80s football team, state champions. Broke some records, I think it was 13 shutouts. I only learned that last night when I was trying to research this place. But uh, very easy, 49 to 11. Man, am I glad I came. He cast out this lure and was sitting there fooling with a little bit of a backlash. And this pickerel jumped out of the water, hitting it on the surface. It hadn't even jerked it. I need to tie on a, on a popper on my fly rod later. Man, because that is cool. If these things are going to hit on the surface, that is cool, man. Oh, perfect. He got that down in his mouth. Makes life a lot easier. You can see his teeth there. You see those teeth? He's kind of pinned his mouth closed. There we go. Oh, my goodness. Check out those chompers. Hopefully y'all can see them. Tiny little teeth. Such a beautiful fish. Not a whole lot of meat on them. I brought a stringer. I certainly fight hard for their size. But so far, I hadn't seen one I want to fool with cleaning. Look at here. I'd been casting up into these lily pads, and then I finally cast parallel to them. Hook this little guy. I want it feels like a better fish here. Right as soon as I turned y'all off, this one hit. Mmm. A fat bass. Look at that. Boy, look how dark he is. I'll go around to here, bud. Look at how dark and fat that bass is. John Brown. I can't get over how chunky he is. My <laughs> goodness. <laughs> 